Welcome to Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk. I'm Rodney Nigel Mayfield. We got a hot show for you tonight. Tonight's topic is, are insecure men and women undateable? Let's do it. to the show. Before I get started, I'd like to ask everyone that watches this video to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell and the drop down menu that says all so that every time I upload new video content, you'll be notified. Also, like, share, and please leave a comment. All right. Again, tonight's show topic is are insecure men and women undateable? My opening monologue. An insecure man is damaged goods as well as an insecure woman is also damaged goods. Would you move into a house that's damaged so significantly that if you were to occupy that house, you would open yourself up to be exposed to all of the elements that could possibly enter that home, such as rain, snow, sleet, the high temperatures, or even accessible to thieves to come in and do irreparable harm to your property or even yourself. An insecure person needs spiritual mental and emotional healing from the inside out. Being in a relationship should be the last thing on their mind. And that is usually not the case for many people who are insecure. Most insecure people feel like getting involved in a relationship is going to help them heal from their past wounds. And that's so far from the truth. Getting involved in a relationship thinking that you're going to erase the memory of the past hurts and pains is just a temporary band-aid. The longer the band-aid stays on, the less effective it becomes because the adhesive on that band-aid becomes too loosened and eventually falls off, exposing the scab underneath the band-aid. All right, welcome to the Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk. We have two pretty young ladies that's joining the show. I would like for you to introduce yourself from the left, then to the right. Rebecca, we see your name. Rebecca, where are you calling from, Rebecca? Where you uh, Where are you from? Oh, well, I, well, I'm from the South, from Memphis, Tennessee, so that's that's my hometown. Okay. Uh, are you currently in Memphis right now? Oh, no. No, I'm not. Okay. No, I'm not. All right. I'm out West. All right. Uh, she's out West. All right. Adriana, where are you from? Well, I'm originally from uh, Mississippi, Holly Springs, Mississippi, but I'm in South Haven right now. Currently living in South Haven. All right. All right. All right. Both of you guys, welcome to the show. All right, Rebecca and Adriana, when you heard the topic of this show, what were your initial thoughts? Rebecca, you can go first. Okay, well, I, I think it's it's pretty much sums up the dating scene all together. So it's a lot of insecure people out there trying to date each other. And it, it's pro- it, it probably has a lot to do with why relationships are so toxic right now and why uh, like people aren't meshing well because uh, there's a lot of insecure people out there and hurt unhealed people right. uh, I concur Adriana uh, what were your initial thoughts uh, of this topic uh, are insecure men and women undateable um, I agree with Rebecca you know pretty much the same thing um, it's a great topic helped you to kind of understand the answer to the question of why it didn't work out you know because so many people are in relationships that are not healed and that's dealt with a lot of things in their in the past life mm-hmm. okay have any one of you uh, ladies ever dated an insecure man before yeah but I, yeah yeah I, th- I, th- I think any i think everybody in life has ran across somebody that was very insecure and yes i I can't speak as a single woman now because I'm married, but back in my Congrats. dating life, yes, mm-hmm. yes, there were, there was, it was, the dating pool was filled with unsecure, insecure, unhealed people. And as you said, like that, 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 that goes hand in hand. If you're insecure, you also need healing. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, um, Adrian? Yeah, I've dated uh, someone that's insecure. Um, 
you know, in insecurity, it kind of goes in different phases. You know, it can be small or big. So, yeah, I dated someone that's insecure and those things, they don't end well, you know, because there's a lot of trust <laughs> issues. So. Yeah. Well, and, and and when I talk about insecure, everybody has some form of insecurities, but there are some people who are extremely insecure where when when you converse with these individuals and, and you see they have uh, uh, distrust and, and you can tell the way they talk, you can tell that if, uh, you know, uh, for an example, if you tell them you're going to call them at six o'clock and you call them at seven and then they question you and ask, how come you didn't call them at six o'clock and, and, and ask, were you out messing around with somebody else or were you doing this? That that question alone from that individual would tell somebody with experience that that person has some form of insecurity because apparently they've been burned in the past by somebody. And I'm talking about with, with this topic, I'm talking about somebody who's extremely insecure, not just the mm-hmm. normal insecurities that, that most people will have. So uh, right. now, Rebecca, uh, you're currently married now, which is a great thing. I congratulate you. Uh, now, Adriana, have you ever been married before? I have. I was married to uh, for about uh, 14 years, so I recently divorced uh, a couple years ago. And so, yeah, there's a lot of issues in there, you know, um, trust, uh, you know, just all sorts of insecurity. Like I said, it can be small, it can be big. Um, you can have insecurity where that person doesn't know how to show uh, enough love because they didn't get that uh, as a mm-hmm. child. So, um, yeah. So, uh, there's some things that happen uh, during your marriage uh, that perhaps led up to the divorce. Did that cause you to have insecurities within yourself when you saw those particular things? Yeah, and, and myself, I struggled with insecurities going into the marriage, and that just goes to show that if both people are not completely healed, it does not end well. So, yeah, I struggle with insecurity, you know, you know physical insecurities, uh, mental insecurity so just all sorts of uh you know, insecurities that that contributed to both of us um you know, just not being happy with one another now would, would any one of you uh ladies um if you saw a guy that you were interested in well rebecca you're now married but speaking uh from a woman when you were single uh if you ran across across a guy that uh, you were interested in physically, if you were physically attracted uh, to him, but you sensed that he had an uh, 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 insurmountable amount of insecurities. Uh, would you work with that man uh, that you were interested in because his insecurities were very obvious uh, uh, and help that guy get some type of professional help, hoping that you could help him get better so that you guys could have a, uh, a, a decent relationship? Would you go to that extreme or will you just... Uh, say that uh, you're not willing to invest that type of time I wasn't willing to invest that type of time I, because that's that's the thing when women say he has potential and mm. the thing about potential is it can potentially not happen in the way you saw it like you may have saw he, he has potential to be this great guy but guess what he can potentially not be that great guy as well so okay. uh, that's the thing about potential and no I'm not willing to work like <laughs> It, I don't know how old you are, but I'm, I'm you all. I'm uh, I'm 41, and so I think at a certain age, like when you're not in your teens anymore, like working with someone if they're not already there, then I, I don't think we should invest any more time into them because it, it's probably gonna be a waste of time, of time nine times out of ten, especially if you're saying it in a way where it's so much insecurity and unhealing that they're wearing it like a coat and they're just like you could just see it all over them know that that person needs to take some time to be with themselves and work on do what only god can do inside of them instead of dragging it into another relationship i agree with that i agree with that now uh i know i'm asking you ladies question but for myself i've had an experience uh many years ago where i met a woman she was physically attractive. She was actually beautiful. But after talking to her about five to 10 minutes, I instantly knew that this woman had uh, scarring that wasn't healed. Mm-hmm. And regardless of how pretty she was, and this woman had a six-figure job, but I had to dismiss all of that materialistic 
uh, stuff. Regardless of how much money she made, how beautiful she was, she would have been troubled eventually because she did not get healed. And she was trying to uh, use me as a rebound from a relationship that she had already had. And I recognized that and I wasn't willing to uh, be the fixer. Or as the rappers say, Captain, Captain Save a Pro. Okay? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Captain, I, I wasn't willing to save her. But, you know, uh, as, as it relates to a relationship, I'm not willing to get involved in a relationship, but I w- I'm willing to be a friend for that woman to help her uh, find spiritual counseling and to uh, be that friend and be that listening ear. But as far as a relationship uh, at my age, and even then, I think I was probably in my mid-30s, I was not willing to put the time in uh, for somebody like that because you can't save them. If they're not re- willing to uh, release themselves to God and allow God to clean them up uh, through spiritual counseling, then there's nothing that I could do outside of that. Now, what about That's you, Adrian? Yeah. Adrian? Um, well, I guess for you, what's, for you, what's the maximum amount of time that you would, um, you know, I guess, evaluate someone to see if it's worth putting energy into? What's you asking me that? that you, I, I am. <laughs> yeah. well, 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 you ask, what's the maximum amount of time I would invest in someone? I'm not going to invest any time to see if I'm, I want to date them because I'm not willing to put in six months. I'm not willing to put in a year. You see what I'm saying? Because for, right. I, I've invested that kind of time in a person. I, I invested like five years into a person and then turn around that that person burned me. You see what I'm saying? When you think that, right. okay, I've got I've gotten this person to a certain point that they have uh, forgotten their past, Certain triggers can happen in that person's life that could cause them to revert back to the old, the old them. You see what I'm saying? So I wasn't willing to, I'm not willing to do that again. So actually zero amount of time to invest in somebody to see if they're right for a relationship. But I would give my time to help them to get better, to improve for somebody else. Okay. I understood. I guess maybe I see things a little differently, you know, um, I wouldn't invest a lot of time, but I would definitely give the benefit of the doubt and just look at how severe the insecurity is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just go through getting to know that person. I think on one on your last show I watched on Dr. Mayo talked about dating someone's mind. So I would definitely, you know, put time into dating their mind just to kind of see where the mindset is before, you know, you go too deep into it. So yeah, I'm just one of those type of people that I just like to, you know, get to know a person and see um, you know, ways that maybe God can uh, intervene and help with that. You know, I know you mentioned about, you know, going into a house and not accepting it for just anything. You know, when you're going into a new house, I think you ask for prayer, you know, guidance, you ask for God to come in and take away the bad spirits and things of that nature. So if I find someone that I'm very compatible with, that I love being with, enjoy being with, I think I would invest some time into seeing if there's an opportunity there. Okay. Well, uh, I think a lot of women and some men think that they can change the other individual. You can't change anybody. You know, there's a saying that uh, a a man that is uh, convinced against his own will is of the same opinion still, really. You know, uh, in front of you, you may think that he's changed, but only... The only person that can change a man or a woman is for the, is that man or woman to submit their will to Jesus Christ and allow him to change them from the inside out. But you can't change a woman. Uh, a man can't change right. a woman and a, a woman can't change a man. Now, do you think it's judgmental? I, I've heard this woman tell me one time before uh, that I was judging uh, the person that I didn't want to date because of their insecurities. Uh, so do any one of you guys think that it's judging a person? If you decide that you don't want to date them because they are uh, they have a lot of insecurity issues, because I, I personally don't. What about you, Rebecca? Uh, oh, go ahead. I've had somebody tell me that as well, and um, ju- judging a person like is just like kind of like looking down on them, and you know, right. coming to a conclusion that they're this type of way. But to say, listen, you got some stuff you need to work on. That's that's just the truth. That that's not judging a person, and you have a right. Like 
that no one can force you to deal with them because they have issues going on. You have a right to say what you will or won't um, tolerate or or be able to tolerate. Yeah, because you're, you're protecting yourself. So you do have the right to protect yourself in your um, mental state. Mm-hmm. Right. Rebecca said, Rebecca said, judging someone is just looking down on them, you know, just, uh, you know, asking them, why are you this way and things of that nature. But yeah, I think you're just protecting yourself. If you don't and then the Bible, the Bible does give us, uh, as Christians, the right to judge righteously based on the word of God. Now, being insecure, uh, it's not a sin. You know what I'm saying? Because we all have insecurities. Uh-huh. But so he gives us the right. And there's only two criteria that God gives Christians uh, in the Bible as it relates to marriage. And I'm not talking about boyfriend, girlfriend type of stuff. But that person has to be of the opposite sex. And that person also has to be in the Lord, meaning they have to be believers in Christ. So that's the only spiritual criteria that God gives us. But God gives us the choice to choose whether we want to date that individual if they meet those other uh, criteria. So uh, it's up to the individual. I don't think it's judgment if you decide that you don't want to date that individual. So uh, now uh, I think people with low self-esteem. Uh, low self-esteem and insecurity issues are basically synonymous but I I think uh, a lot of people who get involved in relationships I think that they uh, are detrimental to that relationship because it seems like some of them think that they're not uh, good enough for that individual and so it seems like they sabotage that relationship uh, because they somehow think that it's going to end so they be the first one that caused the relationship to end have you been involved in a relationship like that before Rebecca? Uh, no, I can't, I can't, I can't say I have, uh, because when I was out in the date, because I was married and then I had time where I did work on myself. So I was like you, like after the first five minutes of a conversation, I could tell how someone was. So I kind of used my discernment and I didn't waste any time. If I seen, okay, you got some issues that that wasn't finna go on for weeks at a time and, or even days at a time. So, uh, I can't say I've, I've carried on with a relationship like that. Cause I've seen it so fast and I, you know, I cut it off at the door and I, and I, I'll be kind enough to tell the person, I think, I don't think you're ready for, for dating right now. I think you need, I think you need to, you know, work on some, some of the issues you have going on. Cause you're not going to get yourself no whole healed woman with with the way you acting right now so that's very bold and, and most people wouldn't come to another individual like that uh what about you adriana would you would you be as bold as rebecca and tell a person i don't think you're ready for dating right now i think you need uh, some counseling i think you need to be healed would you come to a person like that that boldly no that is very bold and i <laughs> No, um, I think I'm I'm just a softer person, you know, and just, I don't know, I just try to let people down easy. But I have been in that type of relationship. And I'm also the type of person I take, I just take too much, you know, I just, I just go all the way to the end, you know, until, I don't know, it just explodes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I have been in a situation like that. And, but of course, you know, you look at that and you think, okay, I know next time, how to do it differently so I think it was a learning opportunity for me and I'm glad Mm -hmm. I was able to learn that so yeah, uh, you know, I think a relationship should be based on on mutual security and and not insecurity you know uh, to have a fear of losing someone before you even get to know them is already a precursor and and a recipe for disaster and I think uh, a lot of people who have insecurity issues uh you know, you tell them, well, I'll call you in a couple hours, but they call you in 10 minutes. You see what I'm saying? I've had that situation before where I met a girl, went to see her and she had a little child, uh, a newborn baby. And that wasn't that wasn't a, a disqualifier for me because I wanted to see if I was interested in it. So I went to see her. And uh, well, when I went to the door and I looked down, I saw the toes inside of those sandals. I was instantly turned off because the toes were like like hammer time and, and so uh, and, and, yeah, but, but I judgmental well, well I'm judgmental because as a woman you should to, for me to date you you need to be yeah. tidy from top to bottom and when I looked down at her toes and her toes looked like hammer time I, I was like no I'm definitely not going to date her even if everything else was straight but I, I went in the house and I chit chatted with her about 15 20 minutes I, would, I already knew I wasn't interested in her but I still want to be cordial and kind and 
And so I said, well, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure meeting you and I uh, hope you have a great day. And she said, are you going to call me later? And I was trying to get out of there without her asking me that, but she asked me. And so I said, yeah, I'll call you in a couple hours. Okay, I left her house and about 15 minutes later, she she called my phone and asked, what was I doing? And that right there, I didn't have to hear anything else. That right there told me this woman has a problem. I just told her. Oh, she just expect to have a man that's a man of his word. What's wrong with being a man of your word, you know? You said I told two, her I, I said, no, 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 I said two, I said two hours. Two hours, Girl, yeah. <laughs> yeah she, called, she called me in 10 minutes. I said two hours. So, but why I, say I said, two, why I say 20 minutes? No, no, because the thing is, I had other things to do. And if I tell you I'm going to call you back in a couple hours, don't call me back in 10 minutes. And so for me, already at 35, I had the experience of a, a seasoned man. And I said, something is wrong with this chick. And so another hour passed. She called me again. And I knew that was confirmation. And I had met this this woman on a, uh, it was a chat line back in the day, uh, a phone chat line. And so I said, well, I'm not going to talk to her anymore because she showed who she really was and I wasn't interested in her anyway. And so I got back on the chat line. And so it was the kind of chat line that when you get back on, the person that you had previously talked to can see that you're on the chat line, right? <laughs> and so, uh, of course, I used a fictitious name and uh, she heard me on the chat line and she said, and my chat, my chat, my chat line name at the time 21 years ago was Taylor, okay? Oh. And she she heard my uh, profile. She said, Taylor, I hate your guts. I hate your guts. <laughs> I was right. This woman had a problem. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So the thing is... Well, you, men sometimes push the woman to have problems. What about that? Do we ever get pushed into having a problem? We can be the nicest woman in the world, the sweetest woman in the world. But, you know, you have someone to come in and they trigger those things. So what, what do you have to say about those things? <laughs> this woman had a problem and I didn't trigger that problem. You see what I'm saying? Uh, by her calling me two uh, two times in an hour period lets, let me know that she had an insecurity issue. So if I was to date her, if I told her I was coming home at 7 and I came home at 7.05, she would probably say, well, you said you were coming home at 7. Man, that right, that, that's the kind of, well, that's the kind of stuff right there I don't put up with. See, I'm a grown man and I'm a seasoned man. And when you're a seasoned man who have experiences like myself, you don't put up with uh, trivial stuff like that from women. I don't. You see what I'm saying? It's too many women out there that don't put up with the BS that are available uh, in the single dating marketplace. And for a guy like me, I'm a six figure man. You see what I'm saying? But I'm not fixing to get with a woman who can't bring nothing to the table, who can't bring security to the table. Uh, when I say security, I'm talking about her her, uh, her mindset. If she's insecure, regardless of how pretty she is, regardless of how much money she makes, doesn't matter to me. I like peace in my life. And I've always been like that from 18, from teenager dating, all the way up until now. I'm going to require peace. And if this woman is not going to add to my peace, we can't be together, regardless of how fine okay. she is. So I, 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 didn't add, I didn't add to her insecurities. Uh, she already had those. And so uh, more power right. to her and the guy that she meet. <laughs> and you're you right, because there, there are a lot of women that you do got to look out for that. Because uh, I, I, I'm a dating coach, so I do talk to a lot of women who operate that way. And that even though it, sound, it made it sound like uh, to uh, Adriana that, you know, that wasn't a problem. There are a lot of women who be like, soon as he don't text you back in five minutes, just going crazy. And yep. down the line, that that does present problems. I think they dealt with some issues before in the past. And like you said, mm -hmm. something is still not resolved. So, right. You know, I think either way you look at it, it's still, you know, an issue with just being insecure. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen, get healed. So the that, best. So that don't, that, like he said, that don't, right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rebecca. I was saying, like, like you said, that doesn't work when you're not healed and you're insecure. It's not gonna work in a, you know, you're not gonna be able to operate peacefully and right. cohesively in a relationship. Yeah, it's not only the best you that you can be in any relationship, right? Right. So, uh, Adriana, you are single, correct? 
I am single. I'm 44 years old. I'm single after, so, um, you know, like I said, 14 years old. Rich. <laughs> so are you back in the dating marketplace? Are you back on the market? I am. Okay. I am. So I, are you... Uh, I have since... been... Go ahead. Go. No, you go ahead. I insist. Oh, um, I was going to say, I have been actively dating, um, and I have found in some occasions that because I'm not completely healed, you know, I tend to give off some of those uh, insecurity, insecure vibes. So I definitely can understand and relate. And so, you know, it, it all boils down to if you're not completely healed in every aspect, you're not going to be the best you that you can be to that person or to yourself. Okay. okay. So, uh, does this guy, uh, have you, you haven't told this guy everything about your past relationship, have you? Which is a no-no. A women who've gone through, uh, trauma in past relationships should never immediately share stuff with guys they first meet. I mean, cause some guys may use that against you later on in a relationship if you start dating. I think you should disseminate stuff little by little, uh, based on the amount of trust that you you have uh, with that individual. Uh, you haven't started doing that yet, have you? Well, um, we've been like um, in a, in stages for like the past year and a half, so I've shared some information. You know, okay. and I'm I'm a pretty um, like I'm 44 years old, and I had I've gone through life and different ups and downs and things like that, so. I have a good sense of people, you know, and I, I pray about it and I ask God to show me things and he'll show me things. And I sometimes I listen to him, sometimes I don't, but, <laughs> but I'm aware. I think I'm aware. I'm a very aware person. Okay. So, Rebecca, being that you're married, uh, do you have any uh, closing thoughts for these young ladies who are uh, in the dating marketplace who have been hurt? in the past who are insecure with low self-esteem, don't know their worth. Uh, do you have any closing thoughts for them uh, to be able to uh, help them to come to the understanding that, listen, God sees them as uh, special. God sees them as somebody who is worthy. And uh, he wants them to see themselves that way also. Uh, yeah, like like you said, um, take that time to while you are alone and work on yourself and and heal by yourself a lot of women are scared to like face that mirror of looking into yourself and continuing to work on your issues because like adriana was saying um like when i first got back in the dating game i spent seven years alone being single when i first got out there i, I dated and then i realized okay i'm not healed I'm not ready. I'm going to I'm going to be on the same stuff I was on last time. It's going to end the same way. So I decided to work on myself and that turned into 7 years of being single. And each time I thought, "May, okay, maybe I'm ready now. God, God will continue to reveal more things in you that you need to work on." And instead the steps of healing, it's it's many steps. It's forgiveness, forgiving yourself, being healed from trauma, being healed from PTSD, maybe nightmares, maybe, you know, insecurity. There's a lot of steps to healing and that can take years. If it took you years to get there, it could take you years to come out of it. So I personally think people should get to a point of being content with being with themselves because when you build up enough insecurity, when you build up security in yourself, you're able to look through a different lens. You're, you're able to say, oh, no, I'm not taking this because I've worked on myself and, I, and I'm worthy of something more than this. So, yeah. So when, when I did start dating again, I had I had come to a complete place of healing. And that's why it was easy for me to say, nope, this won't be for me. And, and I can let this go easily because I'm content and happy alone by myself and God. And until I meet that person who God has for me, I'm going to just say no if God gives me a no. If he's giving me a no, within five minutes, guess what? Goodbye in five minutes. So, wow. uh, and then that led, led, that led me to the man that I'm, that I'm with now who I do definitely believe God orchestrated for us to get together and 
<laughs> he's, like, hey. he's like a dream. He's like a dream husband. So I'm going to steal your title. Say goodbye in five minutes. You in five minutes. You should know. <laughs> yeah, go if, 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 say good. Say goodbye in go five ahead. minutes. If, if God is leading you as a Christian, you should already mm-hmm. know because there's going to be some things that this man says. Wow that is out of bounds, especially if you study the word of God. Now, if you are a Christian woman who don't study the word of God, uh, you're going to think that somebody come your way and just because he's handsome, smelling good, uh, and may drive a nice car that he may be God led, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's God led. You got to listen to what people say, and then you have to uh, watch their actions. And so uh, I think that's excellent advice. Now, Adriana, uh, somebody who is still in the healing phase and still uh, trying to uh, come out of uh, a a past marriage and entering back into the dating marketplace, what advice do you have uh, for these ladies uh, out there who are suffering from insecurity issues? Just the old saying, you know, you can't love anyone until you love yourself. So, you know, if you can't be complete with who you are, who God made you to be, who you are with God, then you just can't give yourself to anyone else. And, um, you know, just be patient and allow God to see the person that he is sending you, you know, so. All right. But Rebecca pretty much uh, said, and and I'm, I'm, I'm listening. So I appreciate that advice. So you, so you're learning from Rebecca. Yeah. Yeah. It's always good to listen and learn. Yeah, yeah, get, yeah. Uh, you know, too old. Amen. <laughs> That's true. I agree. That's very true. I agree. Well, here's my final take on the matter. Pray for those with insecurity and low self-esteem issues that they give their lives and hearts to God through Jesus Christ, and that God guides them to a place of peace and rest in Him. But my suggestions are to release them in God's love. Don't give yourself up to someone who can't see the value in themselves because that could rub off on you and diminish your growth. Adriana and Rebecca, I'd like to thank you for coming on the show via video and feel free to call in anytime to discuss other topics that I may present to my audience. Let's give Adriana and Rebecca a round of applause for coming on the show. If you like this video, subscribe, share, like, and leave a comment. God bless. Thank you.